Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Naval Dreadnoughts. And I am joined today by our uh, expert naval historian, <laughs> Drakinifal. Hello. And today we are building another British ship, uh, but not one that ever actually saw the light of day. So what are we looking at today? Well, today we're going to have a crack at HMS Lion, mm -hmm. which was probably of all the ships bar some of the Washington Cherry Tree ships. It's certainly of the 1930s ships. It's probably one of the ones that came the closest to actually seeing the light of day whilst not doing so, <laughs> in as much as the first two of the class, Lion and Temeraire, were actually laid down. Yeah. But um, they they then suspended construction. It, it, only just, to be fair. I mean, they're ordered at the beginning of 1939. They're laid down in the um, in the summer, and then uh, construction is suspended um, when war breaks out. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they basically have to, like a couple of months where they're putting bits and pieces together, and then about a month after the war's declared, where they're kind of like, oh, well, we'll kind of keep going. And then in October, the Admiralty is just like, no, wait. Um, and then they never really start work again. Mm. So they they just end up uh, clearing the slipways. So they, they, they do have steel laid down, albeit not a lot of it, which compared to a lot of paper designs is, is quite good. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly, uh, certainly more than most. So we've gone with the Modern Battleship 1 hull, um, just because the others are... Just bigger versions of this. Uh, what displacement did uh, what was line supposed to be? Full load. Fully loaded. Um, well, if you're going by long tons, about forty six and a half thousand. If you're going by regular tons, it's just over forty seven. So um, I don't don't know what exactly this tonnage system this game uses. So let's <laughs> I don't 47. know either. <laughs> let's go for forty seven. Let's, let's go with forty seven one hundred, <laughs> which okay. is the. Um, uh, the standard ton deep load mm -hmm. okay because as we've as we've established the game seems to work in for some reason it seems to work in deep load for most things and then very occasionally when we try it we come up incredibly light yeah it's more like standard but it, it's all it's anyway. almost like most of the hulls were built using full load displacement but mm. one or two were built using the standard displacement figure so yeah. You build them and that yeah, and then you get weight left over. Uh, how fast was she supposed to go? So the KG fives were twenty eight. Yeah, the as originally in nineteen thirty eight design, the lions were supposed to be able to hit thirty knots. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit faster. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, it was kind of it's kind of a halfway house between the twenty eight knot standard that most people went with, and then you have the eye was doing thirty three. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just just a little bit quicker. I mean, the, the, there's the 42 and 44 design revisions, both of which are a little bit slower. But um, this this one is the one that was actually laid down. So yeah, I'll I'll put that in the title actually, mm -hmm. uh, so that people remember. <laughs> um, yeah. What about her subdivision? Was she a heavily subdivided ship? Lots and lots of bulkheads, or um, just yeah? Gonna... So I'd go with one off maximum because maximum okay. in the game is pretty ridiculous but many is pretty good <laughs> yeah many many seems fair and then uh beam and draft um i wonder if it'll tell us what we're at so it's saying uh length 716 feet beam 110 and then as we know draft is is a nonsense because it's freeboard yes. and draft but i think but which, which um, is also hilarious because it's like the, the beam of this ship is wider than the beam of actually any of the lion designs <laughs> um, the the maximum the beam of line thirty eight is one hundred and five feet, and the beam of line forty two is one hundred and eight. Um, but the length is colossally under. Okay, so if we go, we could go down on the beam to mm -hmm. one hundred and five, mm -hmm. and then we could make the ship longer seven eighty one. That's actually pretty spot on. Okay. Let's go for the smallest seven eight. There we go. So we're going a little bit over on displacement, but um, well, as long as our weight is actually at forty, just under forty seven, then we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then draft is is very difficult because yeah, it's, so. 
we'll ignore that for the minute. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, what about her um, her crew quarters? Probably standard, I'm guessing. Really standard, yeah. yeah. They weren't designed as kind of royal yachts in disguise or no. anything like that. <laughs> okay, um, towers, we really only have the uh, kind of Queen Anne's Mansion style mm -hmm. ones. Um where did they come to on her superstructure? Did they was there a little this because it's really the only difference between them is was there yeah. a little gap or did they go yes, right pretty to much the edge? Like, pretty much like the KGVs, um you've got the five point two five mountings. Mm -hmm. So there's there's just enough room if the five point two fives are pointing directly forward or down aft, there's just enough room for you to walk past. Okay, uh, so we could have one like that I, you could definitely walk past there. Mm. Uh, the two that's getting a little. That's a plank. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's getting a little um, squeeze past. So, yes. co comfortable or squeeze? Um, comfortable. So comfortable. We'll go, with one. go with the one then. Awesome. And then uh, rest of the superstructure, we basically have two options. We can either have uh, oh. not that one, obviously, but you can either have a. A truncated mm -hmm. matching uh, superstructure on the back, or you can go with the KG5 style one with the uh, launch rail for a seaplane right. in here. Well, the seaplane is what we want. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting out my big book of plans. Wrong book. <laughs> right, I'm just uh, that book ends at King George the Fifth. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to get them kind of roughly in the middle of the ship. There we go. Yeah. That's fun, God. Let's wind back a little bit. <laughs> Here we go, line 38. Right. Um, now, the only problem is... Uh, uh, no, so we can get away with that superstructure. Okay. Yeah, for line 38, we can get away with that superstructure. Cool. That's great. Okay, and then uh, main guns, what was, she, uh, what was she using? So you have three triple 16-inch. Okay. Uh, I don't think that gun model's going to be... Quite right, but it's the only one we have access to, annoyingly. Um, uh, the shape's actually not too far off. Awesome. And then the B turret on a barbet, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, and it's going to be basically almost flush up against the superstructure. Okay, is that the right kind of look for the barbet, or was it like, did it not um, have that kind of ring on it? The barbet is basically going to be King George V style, so it should just be a solid cylinder. Okay, so we'll need a slightly bigger one then. Uh, try let's try the big. Oh yeah, that's, uh, it's the uh, it's the barbet ring for the actual yeah. gun. Yeah, but if I could use a big enough barbet, it'll it'll look right. <laughs> As that was big, I could use huge, I guess, but that's gonna be. Eh, there's a little oversized, but little, whatever. A little bit too big. Um, and yeah, right up against, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah, and then pull the f uh, forward turret back. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there we go. And uh, one, presumably, as a as an X turret back here. Yeah, and then if we can have a look from the top down, make sure we've got it all in relatively the right place. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I think... I think the aft turret's in the right position. I think we need to... Hmm. Uh, can we look at them from the, from the side? Mm -hmm. I think we need to pull the superstructure back just a fraction. Mm -hmm. So if we pull the aft superstructure so it's 
basically flush up against the aft turret. Yep. Uh, uh, one, one. That's it. And then match the forward to that. Uh, and oh, then it's complaining. It's that, complaining about the turret. There we go. Okay. And then. And then pull the forward. There we go. There we go. That's a bit. That's a bit more like uh, the profile. Awesome. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, awesome. And uh, the guns themselves, um, ha are what kind of uh, calibre were they? The 16-inch 45s. Mm -hmm. Ugh, game. It doesn't mm. uh, It doesn't update the lengths unless I take, take only have one turret on. Uh, there we go, 45s. So similar to the, was it South Carolinas that had that? Yeah, the South, uh, set, the, the North Carolinas and the North South Carolina. Carolina. I always get that mixed up. <laughs> yeah. um, well, the, the annoying thing is the Americans did have a South Carolina. I know they did. <laughs> dreadnoughts. Um, yeah, th those ones with the the sixteen forty fives. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And then presumably she had some secondary weapons. So what was she carrying in that regard? Um, so in the nineteen thirty eight version, she has eight. Um, eight twin 5.25s. That's pretty much the same as King George V. Okay, so 5.3. At uh, what length yeah. were they out of interest? If they're 50 calibre, I think. Okay. Just double check. 5.25, yeah, 5.25 50s. Oh, come on, fit. <laughs> there you go. Bit of uh, pixel hunting, but there we go. And then, I know you can't get past them, but that's that's because we're doing beam realistic. So yeah, I mean, you, you could if you could actually squeeze this in a bit more. Yeah. Um, oh well. Oh well. It, it needs must, and then presumably just lots of like AA guns somewhere. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the the 1938 version actually calls for six octuple pom poms, um, but we can't get octuple. Thing, so we just do, Sadly. I guess, twin two inch representing twin barrels and just, yeah, just lots of AA. A scattering. There we go. For, for all that it matters in this game. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, the two inch guns can absolutely shred uh, transport ships. Mm. I have found a use for them doing that. But yeah, uh, small guns like this, yeah, not, they're just, just, just for looks, really. Yeah. So, um, Funnels? Yeah, funnels. <laughs> so how many funnels did she have, first of all? Two. So you Two. have one um, just abreast the second pair of 5.25s behind mm -hmm. the tripod mast. So well, I'll, just, I'll place all the funnel. There we go. And then another one abreast the second pair. Like that? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And were they the... Which funnels are a bit smooth, so... Smooth ones. I think the tall funnel nine... Looks smooth if it'll fit. Come on. on. Try what? ten. I oh, know ten's got ten's got eight. thing on it. The eight fits. Oh, eight. Okay, let's try eight. What happens? Yeah, that looks a bit better. So what happens when we put eight on the front? It'll be too high, but we could maybe put a yes a five. Yeah, because it's uh, supposed to have a little bit higher. Bit of funnel. There we go. Can either be a, yeah, that, a bit shorter or a bit taller. <laughs> that, that, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Um, right, well, that kind of does it for mm -hmm. systems, I think. So yeah. uh, well, we'll we're check our well, concentration later, but bits, that's for later. bits and bobs. Uh, so, what kind of propulsion systems was she designed with? So oil, mm -hmm. uh, maximum grade oil. Um, balanced boilers and of course geared turbines too. Mm -hmm. It's all the latest and greatest. Um, probably about AUX three. What's AUX three say? So? Uh, battery like, system. No, go back one. Uh, diesel. Uh, diesel there, yeah, AUX two. Just diesel engine. And then oh, three. Mm -hmm. Semi balanced. Semi balanced. Yeah. yeah, and electro hydro two. It's all fairly modern. Very nice. And then um, right. Crop five, mm -hmm. uh, Barbet four. Did they turn it down a bit from the KG fives then? 
Um, <laughs> After having all the problems. Yeah, the, the tolerances were made a little bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. and then uh, anti-torp. She actually has one of the top anti-torpedo systems. Five. Um, at least by rating, yeah. Five, yeah. Because the KGVs were the only ones that were notionally designed to resist a thousand pound torpedo warhead. Uh huh. Um, albeit a thousand pounds of TNT, so once you introduce Torpex, there's all sorts of weird conversion factors. <laughs> but um, the def torpedo defense system on the American fast battleships, for example, is 750 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and before anyone in the comments starts going on about <laughs> Prince of Wales, she was hit outside the torpedo defense system. The one hit <laughs> on the torpedo defense system that actually worked fine. Which kind of. You know, proves that it, it did work. I mean, it, yeah. it wasn't really designed to. It, it, I'm assuming the torpedo systems were more focused around, you know, a submarine which would try and hit you square on, uh, or well, the, the, or destroy us or something like that. They only extend so far. Yeah. Um, you you can't put a torpedo defense system of any re real value much past the uh, barbettes because the mm -hmm. hull starts to narrow. So yeah, uh, if you take take a hit, you know, on, yeah. on your stern or on your bow, then yeah, it's going to be bad. So uh, double bottom. Double bottom. Uh, presumably, uh, she had water tight doors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anti flood two. Mm -hmm. And her citadel's all or nothing. All right. Uh, presumably, carry increased yeah. AP. Uh, I'm assuming that being a British base ship, fuse. base yeah. fuse, and a capitalistic two. Yes, in theory, this is where we're going to have to try and vaguely match on the uh, air yeah. armor penetration values. And I'm assuming standard kind of ish yep. shells, standard shells, and the the latest and greatest propeller. Well, it would have been just... it theoretically would have been cordite, the best cordite, because the British okay. are still using cordite at this point. But as I said, we're going to have to work out rates of fire and yeah. armor pen at this point. <laughs> well, well, if we go historical. Set yeah, up and okay. then and then look at the the yeah. pen. Uh, at least we have somewhere to go off, and then presumably picric acid. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Lotus, would she have had a be enhanced? Ha enhanced. Yeah, because you got hydraulics and uh, yeah, electro hydro. One. One. Uh, presumably she was going to be designed with a radar great, set. Late, yeah, latest and greatest radar. Um, she would have had some of hydrophones, not a, I don't think she would have had a, a sonar. Uh, coincidence, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. possibly an RDF as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's have a look at the guns then. Uh, so I am uh, doing this using uh, the balance mod, which is a fan-made mm -hmm. rebalancing. So I'm curious how this is going to turn out. So what range would you like to look at? Right, so all of my figures are in yards, so let's try and get the closest. <laughs> okay, so t at 22,000 yards, which is basically 20,000 meters. Yep. Um, she should be getting, depending on which figures you believe, either 13 or maybe between 13 and 14 inches of armor penetration. Okay, so on a belt it's saying 27. If we divide by... Uh, her own armor quality, 2.4a, mm -hmm. uh, we get just under 11 inches. So it's a little bit under. But not by much. But not massively. Um, could, could we get away with just changing the Picric? Because it's often the Picric. Because it has a minus 10% yeah. pen on it. Right. Yeah, let's go there. Well, let's try TNT 3 for the start. Okay. Let's see how that works. That bumps it to. 30.4 which would be 12 and a quarter inch so put almost almost there almost there um let's try down uh, yeah uh well it's probably not going to make too much as half a percent is it yeah uh, what, let's try the propellant what what is it what have we got with cordite cordite or we could go for triple base which um yeah let's try that uh, yeah, now we're up to 31.4, which would be 12 and three uh, two thirds of an inch. Okay, so let's push it up for TNT4 then. We might we might just get away with it without having to... Um... It'd be nice if we didn't have to change the length of the gun. 31 and a half. Yeah. Wow, that really just does not add a lot, does it? 
2.48. Yeah, 12.7 inch pen. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't think we can. We we'd have to go tube powder, otherwise. Yeah, um, let's try that. Okay, uh, let's try tube powder. Tube powder the best one. For... Three. Oh, okay, that's uh, quite a lot. I think uh, thirty-four point three. Uh, thirteen point eight inch. Oh, that's pretty much right. Well, slightly, very slightly high end of the <laughs> range, but within the range, because mm -hmm. our range is we're looking at is about between thirteen and about fourteen. So thirteen point eight is within that within the arc of that range. Cool. Okay, so not having to change the gun length, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, reload. We are at two rounds a minute, which is basically spot on. Fantastic. And rotation speed of two point nine two degrees per second. A little bit, little bit faster than it probably would have been historically, but not not bad. Okay, awesome. Well, that's pretty much what what we were looking for with the guns. Then that's uh, absolutely that fantastic. Done its job properly. Then <laughs> it certainly has. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it makes a it makes a pretty big difference to the game. I highly recommend it. Uh, and there will be a link in the video description for anyone who who wants to download it. Right, how about armor? Right. So we have um, theoretically this this is where a lot of fun arguments recently have been <laughs> online because depending on the documentation you get from British uh, battleship design documents, it's specified as either um in inch a thickness in inches or a weight in pounds per square foot <laughs> and because one inch of steel armor weighs you know a, 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 a decimal fraction point um it's not a precise uh, sing single figure mm -hmm. so you end up uh, they end up rounding it down slightly Yes. So if the armor is made to the then specified weight, it comes in a little bit thinner. But if it's made to the specified thickness, <laughs> it will come in a little bit heavier, right. which is you know not very helpful. So <laughs> ostensibly, she's supposed to have, in terms of inches, fifteen inches of belt armor. Okay. But people argue that if it was man, if the armor was manufactured to the weight specifications, then it would be fourteen point seven. Okay. Uh, which do you think is the is the better? We we we've tended to give the benefit of the doubt, haven't we? Um, mm. So should we go with the fifteen and assume that the actual thickness is is what it would be? And people in the comments can can argue against it if they want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, th I think if if we did that, then. I mean, it's point. To be honest, it's point three of an inch. There's, there's chances make... where that's going to make any real difference is minimal. Yeah. All right. So, uh, presumably, as an all-nothing ship, just kind of splinter protection on the forward and aft belt sections. Uh, what about her main deck armor? Uh, that is going to be a maximum of six inches. Okay. And then presumably again, just kind of splinter protection everywhere on the forward, aft, and superstructure. Uh, what about uh, um, con conning tower? She probably didn't have one, <laughs> did she? No, not not well. It's yeah. got four and a half inches of armor for oh, what okay. it's worth. Okay, there we go. Um, I have. I did notice when uh, when I was trying out the KG five design, we did mm. the. The game doesn't respect the fact that you just don't have a conning tower effectively. Um, so you take hits to this and your fire control gets knocked out or your captain gets killed really easily. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it for the, <laughs> at this for now and then I'll, I might uh, just change it just so the game understands what we're trying to do with it later. But four and a half mm. inch is the actual value. Okay. And then layering, did you have kind of inner layers or was it just um, the one armoured 
Built, there's and then that's splinter it. catchment decks, but uh, then splinter bulkheads. But basically, it's you know, your 1.5 two inch internals. Okay, so we'll just uh, use this old trick of. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they wish they could have done that, but if we then just say that's one and a half, that's one and a half, it'll give us three uniform 1.5 kind of. Yeah, splinter decks, basically. Uh, what about the turrets? Uh, so the turret faces should be 15 inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, then seven elsewhere. Seven on the top. And, and Robert's can be 15 as well. Okay. And the 5.25s? Um, that's a good question. Um... The 5.25s uh, Just having to look that one up um, It should be the same that was uh, Oh yeah, one inch all splinter, over. splinter only. Cool. Um, well, there we go then. We've got a very, mm -hmm. very slight aft weight offset. Um, but it's not that bad. I could probably fix it by, you know, sh shifting all of this forwards. So I'm not going to do it right now because the game will probably delete the towers or something on me. <laughs> It's just what it normally does, but um, it, I, and it won't make much of the difference to the appearance. So let's let's take her out and have a have a have a quick look. Um, so if Lion had been I don't know started earlier or or, or World War Two had started later, and she'd actually um, what? How, how did that? How does that work? <laughs> Again, I don't, I don't know what it's doing. What are you doing, game? That is that is bizarre. Anyway, um, enjoy a picture of the sea. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's we win. That's bizarre. I th yes, I say we won. <laughs> let's. Mm -hmm. It might be because I've got a shared design loaded. Let's uh, let's write Italy instead. Anyway, um, <laughs> it was only so we could have a look at the ship. If she was finished earlier, or uh, World War Two had started a bit later. Um, and she was in service or close to being in service by the time the war started. What impact do you think they might have made um, if, uh, say, just Lion and Temera had been had been finished? Wow, that's terrible weather. That doesn't help. But okay, <laughs> typical typical uh, North Atlantic seas. <laughs> yeah. This is this is why in the um, 1940. Whoa! Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it does that. It'll settle down. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, in the 1942 design, they um, actually they got rid of the King George V style flat bow, which we can see mm -hmm. here, uh, causing and they replaced problems, it with yeah. a vanguard style um, upwardly curved bow. Uh huh. Um. So sorry, sorry, you were saying uh, impact. Um, so. Laid down in 1938, theoretically it would have you would have been looking at hull launch 1940, mm -hmm. and then fitting out, commissioning in late 41, early 42 at the earliest, probably more like mid 42. Mm -hmm. So, if World War Two had broken out when everyone thought it was going to break out which was about 1942, <laughs> yeah. uh, they would have been... Lion and Temera would then have been newly, basically newly introduced frontline warships, um, which would have significantly boosted the Royal Navy's uh, ability to defend itself, because, of course, by that point, you'd have had a bunch of the King George V in service. Yeah. Um, if it had lasted till 1942, you almost certainly would have had Repulse and Hood pulled in for modernisation. Mm -hmm. And... You would, instead of having basically Hood playing point defense for the possible breakout German battleships, you would have had Lion and or Temeraire 
doing that with backup from King George V class. Yeah, because their 30 knot speed would have meant that they could... Yeah. Well, catch whilst Bismarck. Maybe not catch catch, because I think... Yeah. Well, they but, could plot an interception force. Which far, fast more. enough that, you yeah. know, Bismarck couldn't get away from them either. Yes. Um, yeah, if they, if they managed to pull an Ball Holland style intercept. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're, they're also in the weight class of Bismarck as well. Yeah. Albeit with heavier, heavier armament. Yeah, might have been interesting. What? what <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the the other thing is the the interesting sort of secondary knock on effects of a, a war breaking out at that point because you've got it's not just Lion and Temer are obviously pro at least one, pro maybe both, with the home fleet. Um, you've also got to contend with, um, as I said, modernized repulse and modernized hood coming into play at some point. And with many, many more fast battleships available, with pretty much all the King George the Fifths ready at that point. When you look at historically, you have theatres like the Mediterranean, where until relatively late in in the campaign, you're looking at the QEs and Rs, um, with an occasional visit from Renown. In this case, you would. Quite can quite plausibly be able to say actually we're going we're going to send at least two or two maybe three of the King George the Fifths down to form a fast battleship unit in the Mediterranean, yeah. which suddenly massively more limits the Italians' options because against the QEs and the Rs the Italian battleships always had the opportunity of withdrawing, whereas if the King George the Fifths are present because the Lions have taken up their position in Scapa Flow. The only things that can realistically make tracks are the Latorios themselves. So mm -hmm. the Cavours and the Duilios can't. And to be honest, if the Latorios have to make a 180 and they lose speed <laughs> doing that, the key KGVs mm -hmm. might actually catch them before they can build speed back up again. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's an interesting one. It, I think it's a it's a shame, in a way, that they were they were never completed. Obviously, it made total sense to cancel them when they did, but. Um, yeah, they would have been the the second 16-inch armed ships compared to uh, the Nelson and Rodney. Did they, with the gun systems, were they thinking of using uh, essentially the guns from a Nelson and then fixing the issues no. with them, or were no, they the, just the, completely new? They were completely a completely new design. Mm -hmm. um, it's because because of some of the issues they'd had with the with the the Nelson class. I mean, the other interesting thing to reflect on is that you know the 1938 design laid down in 1939, and that's they're actually laid down just a little bit before the um, well, or at, or simultaneously with the bulk of the South Dakota class. Uh -huh. So um, they are. It's, it's it is a little bit weird in that the North Carolinas, compared to the King George V, which are kind of their contemporaries, the North Carolinas come off with the triple 16s, whereas the King George V have to have the 14-inch because the KGVs are laid down and design finalized slightly sooner. Mm -hmm. But then your second generation of fast battleships, although, because obviously the US doesn't get involved directly in World War II until the end of 1941, they have the opportunity to build their South Dakota class, whereas the Royal Navy getting stuck into the war in 39 means they end up not being able to do the Lions, even though, as we just said, they're laid down at the same time. But with the Lions, um, even Lion 1938, it's kind of flipped things on its head. So whereas the North Carolina is the slightly more advanced design in terms of, you know, upping the armament, in the second gen case, the South Dakotas are still keeping to the 35,000 ton limit. Yeah. Whereas the Lions <laughs> are actually starting, they're starting at 40,000 mm -hmm. and change um, and going, and then for a standard displacement and going up from there. Yeah, curiously, uh, it's actually reporting that we're at the standard displacement on this one. Which for would, yeah, I mean, that's quite fun. Yeah, 40,230 tons. Which is yeah, um, basically spot almost near enough so it makes a yeah. different spot on the standard displacement as planned. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, when the plans comes together. Um, yeah. Well, uh, thank you very very much for uh, joining me to have a look at this 
the ship one of one of the kind of paper ships that I really like and uh, mm -hmm. I I often use in my campaigns and um, yeah I'm sure one that uh, folks at home will be very interested in as well so if you've got any questions or, or things you'd like to know about the line class put them down in the comment section I'll try and answer them and if I can't I'll I'll, uh, I'll bother you <laughs> and ask you um, but thank you very much for joining me and uh, thank you everybody for watching bye for now no worries see you next time